What's up everybody? This is Chris here from East Coast PC and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a video that was personally requested by uh, a supporter of ours that goes by the name of Sajirio Heiko. Now I know I didn't say his name exactly right. I apologize about that man. But uh, anyway, shout out to you for supporting the channel and uh, for requesting this video. He wanted us to do a video on what are the best value CPUs to buy right now and what are the best CPUs to buy right now, period, in this market where a lot of things are not available. So that's what we're going to do today, and hopefully this video helps a lot of people out with their CPU buying decisions. Before we get started, if there's anybody who is not subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It helps us out so much, helps us to grow this channel, and you don't know how much we appreciate all the support. And like I said, drop a like, comment, do all that good YouTube stuff. And if there's anybody that has any questions, if you'll just drop a comment down below and I will do my very best to answer that question and help you out to the best of my abilities. I've been working in the computer space for many, many years and uh, I do everything I can to help people. I, I love communicating with the public. So uh, just drop a comment down below and I'll get to you. I'll do my best to get to you within 24 to 48 hours if it's not right away. And uh, one last thing, I'd, I'd like to thank each and everybody who has already subscribed to the channel. We just hit 150 subscribers the other day, and I, I greatly appreciate the support for every, from everybody, all the uh, likes, comments, and all that good stuff. Thank, thanks again to everybody who's been supporting this channel. And without further to talk about here, let's get started. All right, guys, so we are back, and the first CPU we're going to talk about is the budget option. This is going to be an option that's good enough for gaming, doing good enough for some video editing and all of that good stuff while still on a good budget. And uh, today we are going to pick for that option the Intel Core i5-11400. Now the reason we are picking that option is uh, for one, it's just a good all-around CPU for a good price. Now one thing I want to say uh, at the beginning of this video, by the way, we are located in the U.S. So I don't have current pricing uh, for these CPUs in other countries, however, the CPUs that I am going to recommend for each category, uh, what I do is I encourage you to check for those in your country and, and you know, kind of say whatever $189 equals for this 11400 here. If that uh, comes out to about the same thing in your country, then that would I would also recommend to purchase that in your country if you can get it for about whatever $189 US equals in your country. Now, the Core i9, or excuse me, the Intel Core i5-11400 is a basically the best budget option in my opinion right now. It's six cores, 12 threads, with a turbo up to 4.4 gigahertz. And the big thing about this, this CPU now with the 11th gen, now I do, I do not recommend most of the 11th generation lineup. Most of it is base, it is terrible in my opinion. However, this is one of the CPUs that is basically the GM in the whole 11th gen lineup. So one of the things that hampered performance with the Core i5-10400, and the reason I did not recommend it is because you could not overclock the memory. And when the memory was stuck at uh, 2666 megahertz, it just tanked the performance that the processor was capable of. Well, now we no longer have that problem because you, you no longer have to buy a C-series motherboard to overclock the memory. You can actually uh, buy a new Intel B560 motherboard of your choice and you can overclock your memory. So I recommend pairing this processor with uh, some 32 or 3600 megahertz memory. If you can get some 3600 megahertz memory on a deal, that would be great. But 3200 megahertz would also do the job. We don't we don't want to go crazy. We are pairing it with a, a budget CPU. But Best Buy here in the U.S. has it in stock for $189, and that is around the the trade the one uh, K trade pricing, which is basically the uh, the price that retailers have to pay for a thousand units. So that is a that's a good buy in this scenario. The other option would be to get the now outdated uh, Ryzen 5 3600, which I put in a lot of my customers' computers. I recommended it for a while, but I do not recommend buying that anymore. I recommend going with this option. Both of them are basically on dead platforms now. I do believe we're going to get a uh, refresh, a slight refresh, maybe a, a like a XT refresh. From what I'm hearing, the 
Warhol thing got canceled. So basically, if we get a refresh in the fall with AMD, it should just be like basically what the 3600 XT was to the 3600. Not a very big performance jump and not nothing to worry about as an upgrade path really. So both of them are basically on dead platforms now. If you need a CPU to buy now, that's what we're doing. We're going through the CPUs. Uh, the best options that you can currently buy at retail price. We're not talking about scalping prices here. So for $189, this is my winner here. That, like I said, the only other option is the Ryzen 3600. It's selling for, uh, I believe, 205. So that would be uh, 15 extra dollars on Newegg right now. And this is just a better buy. It's a better performance CPU and it's also better in gaming. So uh, the, I never really recommended the uh, Ryzen 3000 series for high performance gaming. It, it, you know, that was the 9900K, but we're still in talking about budget options here. So this is the clear winner, guys. We're gonna move on to the next category. So in the next category, uh, I, I'm gonna, I guess we'll go to the AMD option first. So I know a lot of you uh, might be scared to, or not scared, but, basically have been talked out of buying Intel processors by the mainstream media. And in this market that we're currently in, what we have to do is we have to look at the best option that both the blue team and the red team have to offer. And that's why a couple of uh, what I could still consider very good uh, Intel CPUs made this list, one being the one that we just got done talking about. Now, so for the next category up, we're going we're gonna to talk about the higher performance category. So, which means, in, in my opinion, eight or 10 core CPUs. Okay, the 5800X, it was priced kind of steep in my opinion. It was like the, as far as uh, value per dollar, you know, for how many cores you got and the performance you got, it was the, you know, basically the worst uh, value in the whole stack that AMD has released so far in the uh, 5000 series lineup. However, it has now dropped to its absolute lowest price of $421.05. That is a good option if you if you already have if you're already on the AMD platform or if you're not on the AMD platform, it's a good option. And if you do need more cores and you're just not willing to pay scalper prices, which I do not recommend, this is uh, absolutely a good buy to hold you over. It's good at content creation. It's it's great at content creation. It's great at uh, gaming. It's great at about everything you do. Now, when I say content creation, of course, it's not a thread ripper for you know just rendering 4k videos all day long and it's you know it's a great eight core cpus a lot of you watching this video will probably know about what an eight core cpu is used for and if you want a good performance option if you're gaming on it and you're doing video editing and even streaming and stuff eight cores will get you by still it, you know I would like to recommend the 5900x for a true high-end performance option but uh the Ryzen 5900X and the Ryzen 5950X are still basically out of stock everywhere. They're extremely hard to get. I mean, they are like a, they are so hard to get right now. And you can buy them here on Amazon. And what I will do, I will show you the current price of one of them uh, from a third party seller. And it's not good, guys. It's not good. So, the, yeah, the Ryzen 9 5900X is $700 right now. Um, and if you wanted to talk about the 5950X, well, that's $1,039. Now you might can hunt and peck around and find, and find one five, 10, $15 cheaper than that or $15 more than that, but that's basically what we're gonna pay right now if we want one of them. So that's what brung us to uh, that 5800X, guys. So the next option we're gonna talk about is the Intel option, the Intel alternative for the 5800X. And I believe I might have called the 5800X and 5900X just then, but sorry about that if I did that, guys. But um, so the Intel option for the 5800X would definitely be the, the, the temp generation, which now is the former generation, the Intel Core i9-10850K. Now it comes in at $394.99, and you get two extra cores, four extra threads than the CPU we just got done talking about. And what would that be? That would be about thirty, about twenty-five dollars cheaper somewhere, somewhere in there, about twenty-five dollars cheaper. And you get a Death Stranding gaming bundle. I don't. It, it's supposed to be a great game. I haven't played it. I have a lot of friends that absolutely love that game. So, uh, yeah, of course, you get the little pin here. That's nothing to write home about. But what you do get this processor and a uh, sixty-dollar game. Now, 
the one thing I want to say about this processor, like I was talking about in the 11400, do not be afraid to buy Intel. This is a absolute excellent performance CPU. Um, it's, it's excellent at gaming. And it, this beside the 5800X, they, they're basically going to trade blows gaming. Uh, and there is some scenarios where this wins. There's some scenarios where the 5800X wins just because of the the very high IPC, but games that scale with cores such as Warzone, uh, they really love this CPU right here. Warzone loves the 10900K and 10850K. And another thing is your your lows are a lot of times better than the AMD CPUs. And the reason your 1% lows and your 0.1% lows are better a lot of times on these CPUs. And the reason why is because the latency, the ring bus is, is just honestly works better than the chiplet design uh, for, for extreme low latency applications such as uh, multi massive multiplayer gaming such as Warzone and Fortnite and other things that games that you play competitive that are based on latency. Now with 10 cores and 20 threads, this processor has the, cap the you know capability of being a stream and record and gaming PC all at one time. It has the extra cores and you can over you can throw a good overclock on this thing 5.1 gigahertz on all cores, possibly get 5.2 depending on your uh, cooling solution and uh, and depending on the silicon lottery how well of a sample you get. Uh, I can highly recommend this processor for $394.99. In this current market that we end up we don't have a whole lot of options. And uh, so the budget option, obviously, that was won over, in my opinion, by the 11400. I think it's a great option at $190. For the next performance tier, uh, like, like, we were, like we're talking about now, the 5800X and the 10850K is about your best options. And, and guys, just think about what, what exactly you're going to be doing. Look at some benchmarks. And uh, I don't have these specific CPUs in hand, so I can't benchmark them. To, but there are plenty of people, plenty of uh, outlets online that have benchmarked these CPUs. Gamers Nexus does an absolute excellent job at uh, benchmarking just about every CPU that comes out. And um, Hardware Unbox does a really good job too. And one thing I will tell you guys, uh, if you do go for that budget option that we just talked about, uh, you want to get a you want to make sure you're running that with uh, unlimited power. There is a few motherboards on the market as hardware unboxed has talked about that will restrict those uh, CPUs out of the box, the ones without that you know the non K SKUs. So if you run this CPU, this budget option here with uh, unlocked with the unlocked power limit and put some decent memory, some 3200 or 3600 megahertz memory, you're going to have your good budget options. And there's two options that, I, that we've just been talking about here, the 10850K and the 5800X. They are the best options in the next tier up. I can't say which one would be better for you definitively. Uh, the biggest takeaway on the 10850K is we do not have uh, PCI Express 4.0 support. That's probably not a big deal uh, to most people. It's something that I do like to have. Uh, I do like it going forward. I, I like having that option. We're going to be moving to PCI Express 5 uh, late this year and into next year with AMD is going to get their platform out with uh, PCI Express 5.0 next sometime next year. Uh, so we are going to be moving ahead again. It's probably going to be a little while before the SSD co SSDs come out with PCI Express 5.0 because they require massive in engineering to be able to, to, to cool those controllers and just to be able to write at those insane speeds that PCI Express 5.0 is going to offer. But uh, that's the only downside I see for this CPU. At this price, get a good motherboard, overclock it, and man, you're going to have a great 10 core, 23 CPU. Uh, or if you, you know, got reasons, if you already have something like a, a 3600 or a 3700X and you're looking to upgrade, then the 5800X is a, is a great option. Both of these are great options and that's just something that, you know, you're going to have to make the final purchasing decision. But I like both of these options. Do not, do not let nobody steer you away from this CPU if, in, if you're not worried about the PCI Express 3.0 thing. If you are worried about that, I understand why you want PCI Express 4.0. But uh, other than that, do not let anybody steer you away from this CPU. It is an excellent performance CPU. And in most cases in gaming, it, it's trading blows with the 5800X, sometimes winning. And that's just how it's going to go in some games. But uh, they, they are about the two best options for our next performance tier up. Now, the ultimate performance tier, or the 5900X and 
uh, 5950X like we talked about earlier. They're just basically out of the question if you want to pay a scalper. So uh, what we're about to do now is we're about to look at other options for the two categories we just talked about. Uh, I talked about the best options that I, what I think are the best options uh, already. But if you want to know what other options you do have, uh, the Ryzen 5 5600X is $300. That's kind of at a weird pricing category. Uh, it, it's kind of too high for the for the true budget option. It, it really is too high of a price for the true budget option. And that's why I haven't talked about it much in, in this um, in this video here. It's still a good CPU. It is a good CPU. It's just, it might be a little too steep for a lot of people. So if you want a good six core 12 thread processor and you're willing to pay that, um, you know, I'm definitely not going to try to talk anybody out of it. It's not a bad CPU in any way. It's just how good is it for the price and, you know, what we're currently comparing it against. It, either way, though, it is a good CPU if you're willing to pay, to, pay that price for a uh, six-core CPU. If not, I definitely recommend that Intel Core i5-11400. Uh, I think it's better in just about every way than the Ryzen uh, 5 3600 for last generation. So that kind of squashes that debate for me. Uh, you know, both of them are basically on dead platforms, like I said earlier, other than the possible XT refresh that I think we'll probably get, but I don't think it's going to be a whole lot of performance, guys. It's probably not going to be nothing to write home about. I can almost guarantee that. The next and last option we're going to talk about uh, is, well, oh, sorry about that, is uh, the Ryzen 7 3700X here. So this processor is $305, and it's kind of another one in, in that category of, well, uh, last gen Ryzen was good in a whole lot of scenarios too. It wasn't, they, in my opinion, they weren't the best gaming processors. It all depends on what you're doing. If you're playing single player games and you're not pushing high FPS, then yes, it's a great processor. But um, if you are trying to push as many frames a second as you can, I would definitely go with one of the current gen AMD Ryzen processors or go with that 10850K. If, if that's what you're doing, if you're chasing frames and you're, on, and you're kind of looking for a good deal on a very high performance CPU, that 10850K is the best, uh, in my opinion, uh, along with the 5800X. You know, both of them are great. One has two less cores and four less threads. But that's, you know, kind of where the problem comes in with the 3700X. Um, the, 57, the 5800X and the 10850K are both a lot better CPUs than that obviously this is a hundred dollars cheaper so th that's a decision again that, that you know will have to be thought about a little bit i kind of you know don't like recommending this cpu a lot if somebody came to me and they just needed eight cores and they were going to do a lot of multitasking and they weren't doing they were just kind of gaming on the side uh yeah it's still it's still a very good option at, at 309.99 if you are going to be gaming and only gaming and not doing nothing else, then uh, most situations, the, even the six core 12 thread 5600X that we just talked about for 299 would be a better option than this. So uh, basically guys, that's uh, the best price assessors that I have on my list to buy right now. Uh, unfortunately, the, you know, I'm, a, I'm a, a big enthusiast, you know, I'm running a 9900K right now. And uh, any of you guys that follow the channel know that I have a 5950X that uh, I worked hard to get. And we're going to be putting that in our upcoming build to, to do all the stuff we're doing here on this YouTube channel. And basically be my, you know, master of everything build, ultimate performance build. Unfortunately, guys, I can't um, give y'all CPUs that you can buy right now on the internet uh, that that really fit the ultimate performance category because they're just not available. I got mine through a new egg shuffle. Uh, so the 5900X and the 5950X are excellent high end performance CPUs. The only problem is you can't just go online and buy them without paying scalper prices. So if you are looking for one of those CPUs guys, you probably already know how good the performance is, you know, for the most part. And yes, they, they both offer great performance. So if you are looking for one of them, just enter that new egg shuffle every single day that they have them. Um, if you live by a micro center, which I do not, the closest one to me is about five hours away. If you do, you are very fortunate and blessed to live by one. And I highly recommend checking them daily for uh, one of those processors. And you can probably definitely get your hands on one of them. But for the rest of us that live out in the boondocks and nowhere near a micro center, 
these are the best options that, that we just went over if you have to have a CPU right now. Uh, and they're not bad options. The, we, we have been very blessed that the, a lot of these CPUs, such as the 5800X, is now always in stock. It's now gone down, uh, what, $29 in price from its launch price. So now I can say, okay, it's gone down enough where it's not too much of a steep price to pay for an excellent, probably the best, one of the, it is the best eight core CPU that's ever been made to date, along with the 9900K in my opinion, uh, as far as the, the best ones of their generations that's ever been made. So, and the 5600X is readily available now too. Both of those CPUs, you can basically get in stock whenever you want them now. Uh, the 5600X still might drop out of stock every couple of days, but you can get that CPU very easily now. But anyway, guys, uh, thanks so much for watching this video. If there's anybody who isn't subscribed to this channel, if you're still watching, please hit that subscribe button. We appreciate each and every one of our supporters. Y'all have helped us out so much, and uh, I just I enjoy communicating with y'all and, and running, this, running this channel and being able to share my thoughts and my experiences in the PC building world with each and every one of you. So. Thank each and every one of y'all again, man. Don't forget, drop a like if you don't like. Hit that subscribe button, and uh, I will see each and every one of y'all in the next one. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see y'all soon.